Welcome to Infinity's Shaman Circle. I have created a sacred space dedicated to you, your body and soul, and our spirit tribe connections. Here, Soul Family Journeys Together. Hey there, welcome to Infinity Shaman Circle, and I am, in fact, Infinity. And I have Gypsy, one of my cats, in my lap, so you may see her pop up um, here at any time. Uh, so welcome, welcome again. I, uh, if you are returning here with me, or if you're brand new, welcome for the first time. Thanks so much for listening to your guidance and checking out my podcast. Uh, this is a brand new podcast that I've started specifically with the soul quest program that I'm facilitating that I channeled, uh, for my clients, for myself, for the world to help us get closer to our souls, to our soul purpose, to our life purpose, to our destiny. So what we're supposed to be doing, creating and how we're supposed to be collaborating and uniting, uh, the ways that we're best suited and needed to, uh, help and heal ourselves, what we should pay attention to, what we should prioritize, uh, all that good stuff, what we should let go of and heal and how to do all of that as well. Uh, bit by bit, getting closer to our souls, uh, in a really, really deep and profound way. The Soul Quest program came to me in the middle of February uh, 2022 when I was on hiatus. And uh, it was very clear that what was needed was kind of a time out for us to uh, really focus in on who we are, where we are now, how we've changed, how we've transmuted and transformed and evolved so far in our journeys, no matter where you happen to be in your spiritual awakening uh, or healing of yourself, however you want to categorize that. And for myself, I've done a lot of leveling up, leveling up, leveling up over and over and over again. And and gotten into so many different things um, and been guided to produce and message and create and collaborate and broadcast in many different ways over the years so far. Um, and uh, I'm being channeled more and more higher level information for creation and uh, and I myself was like, whoa, I need real clarity on where I'm going because the possibilities are truly endless, um, and <laughs> infinite. And so it, it just, it was just this really beautiful thing that was just like, we really need to take a time out and get soul connected and get connected to, to the past, the present and the future, um, in a really deep and profound way while getting closer and closer to the essence and the energy and the connection and the unity and, and, um, the infinite, uh, nature of our souls, of our existence, of our lifetimes in body, out of body, on upon Gaia, in other in other uh, realms, dimensions, planets, universes, uh, <laughs> uh, and in these lifetimes, we're finding that all of us that are awakening have awoken that. Okay, so there's a little glitch there, but I think we're good now. So anyhow, we are as these awakening beings. Um, and the more people that I talk to, the more clients that I have, the more lives that I do, uh, it, it's really clear that so many of us have had a lot and are having a lot and do have a lot of experiences and traumas and really intense situations in these lifetimes. And, and whether you're conscious of how they're connected to other lifetimes or not, they are. And, um, you know, themes and archetypes run, um, 
in patterns, not only in each individual lifetime, but in our soul story um, as however it's needing, it plays out and, and has to go through those themes, themes and cycles and loops um, before they branch and grow um, into higher level timelines. Uh, this is within each lifetime and as a whole. So whether you're looking at one dot on in the in the spiral of your life or you're looking at all of them the same thing applies it's a fractal of a fractal and it just keeps kind of going and and the themes can kind of look a little bit different the players can obviously be different or at least look different um but uh there's definitely themes there so anyhow um and the whole like i call it the big fat burgers like there are so many of us that have these big fat burgers to work on and kind of chew through as we discover ourselves and align and clear and heal and be really intentional about how we're focused on ourselves and our spirituality and how seriously we take all of that um because uh, we know we need to for however, which way that that may land upon us individually. So with that said, uh, it's important to keep all of that in mind when we talk about getting into the emotional body and the emotional body map for those of you who are doing the program. Um, and as a, a uh, little sidebar here, the Soul Quest program can be started at any time. We are at this point, February 14th, sorry, not February 14th, April 14th, uh, 414, 2023, uh, in the maiden voyage of the launch of this program. And with it is the weekly podcast the uh the weekly live show to review the the map that we just did uh and we have the forum a peer-to-peer -peer forum that i'm highly involved with i post there all the time i i'm in there with you guys and um it's a wonderful um space that you have lifetime access to when you do the program. So for more information on the Soul Quest program and how we get into all of our bodies, the um, spiritual body, the uh, mental, yes, the, no, the mental body, the emotional body, the physical body, the energetic body, the abundance body, then we get into our true identity after you know, really going through whatever we've been through in our lives, no matter where you're at, you're different from where you were even a year ago. So who are you today? Let's see who you are today and work from work outwards from that reality, not the who you were six months or a year or five years ago, um, because you have changed a lot. So your true identity, really bringing that out and then uh, honing in on your spirit name and the process that you go through to go through um, to do that for yourself, which is extremely empowering. Of course, yes, my name infinity is my spirit name and I'll do a podcast here in the near future about my spirit name and how that came to be. It's really fun interesting story. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love, I love my spirit name. I love my given name, Vanessa, but I am to go by my spirit name, uh, and for people to call me my, by my spirit name, it is encoded with the 1111, uh, awakening, spiritual awakening, uh, encodement, and with the way that I spell it with uh, the I at the end, so that so all the eyes become ones, and then you have the 1111. So um, so it is a big deal. Um, but it's a big deal for everybody. And if you're guided to do that, now you don't have to 
figure that out in the program. It's a launching pad for figuring that out for, for yourself when you're meant to. And then the process that you go through and the stages of that and all the good stuff when it comes to your spirit name. Okay. So anyway, again, check out archangelslove.com for all of the details. Um, also there's payment plans. There's monthly payment plans that you can do. There's the astral guided spirit channeled astral guided spirit walk meditations that, um, you should really look into if you're considering doing the program because it just isn't the same journey without it. Um, but there is the option, at least at this point, we're keeping it the option, maybe coming, maybe coming soon. I won't, I'll be guided to, to make it part of it and just have it all included. Um, but at this point it is an option to get those, but I highly suggest that you look into the spirit walks. If you want to know what my spirit walks are like, you can get to some of those from my YouTube channel, Archangels Love, uh, on YouTube. You can also get to them uh, from my website. And if you go to the more section on the menu and go all the way down to the, uh, I think it's the second to the bottom, it's the channeled guided spirit walk meditations. And there is a group of them there. They're called the core five. When uh, I have my clients start with me in the Evolve Now program, that is one of the first things I have them do if they haven't already is go through those spirit walks. Um, but I do offer them for free on my website to anybody who wants to do them. You just have to go to the website and just play them <laughs> directly from the website. So I suggest you check those out so you can have an idea of what it is that these spirit walks are like. And uh, I guarantee you'll see just how amazing they are. And you're going to want them to be part of your soul quest program. It's an investment that pays for itself over and over and over again, because you can, you'll have them for forever um, to be able to keep yourself aligned from this point forward. I uh, being able to redo those those very healing, very empowering and beautiful, supportive, loving spirit walks. I, I just absolutely love them. They're on a whole other level. <laughs> um, so they're even better than that. I mean, those ones are great too, but this, yeah, it's a, it's a whole other thing. So anyway, we are getting into the mental, sorry, the emotional body. I keep saying the mental body. We're getting into the emotional body here in week three officially with our uh, second map. Um, and, or sorry, week, yeah, well, week three, yeah. <laughs> Depends on how you count it. Anyway. I confuse myself with that all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, it gets a little confusing working in two different weeks because I'm the one facilitating it. So I'm doing the, I'm actually doing the program as well as facilitating the program. So I'm in both weeks at the same time. So I get confused anyway, just to be clear. Um, the emotional body. Now, after the mental body map, for those of you who uh, are doing the program or will do the program, it is a lot and it's intense and it really um, forces you to really think things through about yourself um, and your mental body, your programming, your stories, your triggers, and a whole bunch of other things. Like I said, in last week's podcast, obviously none of these bodies work independently completely from the other. They're all integrated no matter what. Um, so if your mental body is involved, so is your energetic body. So is your physical body. So is your spiritual body. So is your emotional body. It just depends on the different things that we're doing and how we process on all these levels. And when we get into seeing them from these different levels, 
it's going to be really hard to miss anything because we've seen it from all these different angles and how the bot, how our beingness, our bodies, um, hold on, transmute, uh, block, uh, clear heal whatever it's all it, it's very interesting how it all works because they are separate but they're integrated and of course flow all together so anyhow like i said in last week's podcast they do that they automatically you can't be talking about the mental body without it also being emotional and vice versa but the way that these questions and assessments for yourself are are designed is to see now these things that whatever you're come up for you from a from an emotional position versus a mental position or a logical position or another type of way to look at it from the mental body so the emotional body um it gets more into like the soft juicy center of things the you know the fears the the triggers um the pain you know things like that in different ways that is the emotional like what like ways we need to forgive because forgiveness, that that really, that's very emotional. When we either can't forgive or need to forgive or need forgiveness, that's very emotional more than mental, isn't it? And it's also very energetic. And it's also very physical and spiritual. <laughs> See, it all goes in there. But depending on how you're processing and thinking about a situation, kind of either engages or disengages the different bodies to different degrees and so when you get into the mental body and these questions that are being posed to you it's gonna be from that direction so there is obviously 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 gonna be overlap from what you just did in the mental map but it's going to be with a different vibe a different flavor and yes so some of those things are gonna come up for you again obviously you're the same person but there's gonna be some things that are gonna be a little different then you're going to also see patterns and themes, the same things over and over and over again, and some new things popping up. And this is when it starts to happen here in the mental body. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> the emotional body after we've gone through the mental body. Also, the emotional body, just so you know, not as long as the mental body uh, map that we just did. That one is... Um, it is longer um and it does take a lot more um stamina and also the spirit walk is very energetically intense and clearing and activating so to help us uh with a bird's eye view of what we're doing looking at ourselves um in through the mental body um and again all of it with the intention of understanding ourselves and getting closer to our souls soul connection so we can answer the big questions for ourselves what are we doing here what's our purpose what should i focus on what what direction do i go in what where you know all the different things will get will be so much easier to get clarity on and answers on if we've cleared the path to the future by cleaning up what where we're at now or and acknowledging where where we've been and processing things out in a certain way so we can have a bigger broader clearer perspective of ourselves who we are, what we are, what we're doing here, where, what, what star system we're connected to as far as our brother and sister's souls that are incarnate and how we're supposed to get into our constellations of 
of mission here and create from those dynamic, sacred, geometrical, lifeline, web of life, um, integrated forces of energy that have been designed for us to be a part of. Um, and the clearer we are, the higher our life force is going to be. Our energy goes to the higher vibrational timelines instead of managing and maintaining our physical and emotional and mental energetic bodies because we're processing and holding on to a lot of bullshit that we don't need and we're connected to and more integrated into the material matrix versus the abundant matrix. The last body we get to, by the way, is the abundant body. So anyhow, um, the higher the life force we have, the higher our vibe, the higher uh, level um, downloads and integrations and activations we will be able to process. The less fear we have, the more stamina, the more uh, health all the way around after a lot of detoxing. That's another thing that's going on in the group is there's what we call spontaneous detox and just kind of either it's ramping up or it's, you know, somebody, people, everybody's having some type of, of reaction to this because between doing the map and the spirit walks together and um, most people are doing those spirit walks twice at least, um, it really moves a shit ton of energy and you can transmute so much, but the physical body keeps anywhere between 30 to 50%, um, as you are, uh, releasing and kind of becoming more conscious and, and healing and processing all that, um, energy and connecting and all the work that we're doing in astral and in your sleep. And there's so much going on. Um, that does process out um, in your sleep and in the at the time that you're actually doing doing the work, mostly in your sleep. But there's only so much that can um, happen there. The physical body must do a you know cleanse that out and detox and de, uh, de um, yeah detox and. Yeah, whatever. I can't remember what I was going to say. But anyway, um, I started seeing it and I got all distracted. Um, <laughs> um, because it really is like all of a sudden there's, it, it's like, okay, how do I explain it? It's like suddenly all like the, the porous parts of yourself, your, your, your filters that are collecting that hold on in in the different levels of the way that your body does that which is a lot of different ways that i'm not going to get into now but it is definitely something to have another podcast about but anyhow um and so it's like all of a sudden taking those filters that are holding all these sponges basically um, that's probably a better way to see it is like you're spongy and you hold on to stuff, <laughs> your own stuff, the world stuff, your family stuff, your lover's stuff, your kids stuff, your pet stuff, your, you know, everything you're connected to the world and everything in the multiverse, we are part of on some degree that we're processing, holding on to releasing, transmuting, sending out, bringing in always always. So this is why taking care of ourselves and detoxifying and, and meditation and eating right and getting, being in nature and all these things that we work on holistically, plant medicine and, and all of that is to help us have as clean of 
of the spongy self as, as we are, you know, uh, rather than being dirty. But when we go through big transform transformational, uh, especially intentional processes like the Soul Quest program, we are going to be having these big releases and of toxic energy and um, that we that the we need to process out literally because it's not just an idea. It's not like, oh, I figured this out and that's that. And it doesn't, there's no weight to that. There's absolute weight to that. Or I for, or oh, I finally see it a certain way and I forgive so and so. Or that's there's weight to that. There was this abuse, trauma, whatever it was. I've been afraid and scared and angry and judgmental. There's weight to that. And there's weight to that once it's released. And, uh, but there's still the remnants of that, that the body needs to process out. So we will be extra tired. We will need more sleep. We will be achy. We will be cranky. We will be emotional. We will be uh, swollen. Um, uh, we will, uh, you know, have maybe a little bit of a sore throat or sneezing, have a full on like cold, what we call spontaneous detoxes when the body just goes, we're, we're at a point we need to detox. So we're going to clean out the system. Um, so that that's definitely part of the deal, um, that comes with, uh, you know, real healing, <laughs> It's just the way that it is. And um, to me, that is, you see the smile on my face. I love that shit because it tells you you're doing something real. This is not just in your head. This is not just ideas and fantasy and wishful thinking. This is real deal work that you're doing to heal yourself deeply, unconditionally, fully, fully. And you notice after you do this kind of thing for yourself, and this is why the people who have worked with me deeply understand what that's like and keep coming back again and again to do it again and again with me in these different ways because they've seen what it does for them in all aspects of their lives. I'm preaching the choir here for those of you who I'm talking to. And you're like, yeah, that's what I'm doing here because it's one of those things and it's real deal shit. It's real deal shit to heal yourself and, and to know yourself and to be open to the reality, to the truth, to the truth. What you know it to be consciously or subconsciously, it will come up if you decide to go and get it. And, and, and the puzzle pieces will come together and it'll feel really good to see it and to, and to perceive it from a different standpoint. And you're walked through how to do that in this program. And when it comes to the emotional body, this is like, you know, the raw, the raw dog business. <laughs> this is, you know, when we're like... This is very Pisces energy, if you will. It's very emotional. Obviously, it's, you know, it's very like this is the, you know, also shadowy in a way because it's the real way that you feel about yourself and your life and your people in it and your experiences. Um, and, and the promise that you have to make to yourself when you do this program is that you're not going to make excuses. You're not going to deny, you're not going to tell yourself stories that, or believe stories or be in denial that you're going to tell yourself and be truthful with yourself and how you really feel and how you want to feel. And especially when it comes to the emotional body map, it's so important to be really honest about how you feel and, and when we don't like how we feel or how we think or how we process or how anything about ourselves, that's a real invitation to do some work. That's like, that's like a cheat code <laughs> to be, it's like, I feel this way. I don't like feeling this way. It's like, that's a total cheat code on, on, on some, on a big 
boil of energy that needs tending to so you can get rid of that and not feel that way anymore and then feel so amazing for your about yourself because you just don't feel like that anymore and i can't tell you how good it feels for when my clients go i don't i would have done this or i would have said that or I, my body would have done this or it would have been like that and now it's like this and it's so amazing i never thought it would be that i could feel this way and it's because and they they know it's because i did this stuff in their programs or now in the soul quest program or however it is or both a combination of you know it's because it's because it has to be there is no way around it when you move things the reality changes. If I move my couch from here to there, my reality changes. There's no way about it. It doesn't stay the same because all the shit that's on this couch now over here is not going to be on this on the couch over there. And that's why I'm moving it. So it's a different reality I'm going to experience, which is exactly what's going to happen tomorrow when I move my couch and put my new desk here. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. But anyway, the point is, is that it's real. And it affects you in a real way when you shift your perspective and you uh, and you see things differently and you can tie things together and put things um, in places and clear stuff out and organize things in such a way that makes it uh, then they're called maps. You can see it's like really building a map or building the maps help us build a map at the end that tells us all the things that we need to know on every level for us to work with and pay attention to and prioritize, et cetera, et cetera. Excuse me. So the emotional map, getting into that, I. Uh, to spend some time with yourself really thinking about it being okay to um have feelings that are not comfortable that you try not to pay attention to because that's what this is it's basically paying attention to all the stuff you're used to not paying attention to the stuff you're used to you know putting down way deep and covering stuff over, you're going to be excavating. So you, it, you're you forced to think about stuff and to feel stuff, most likely, that you're not going to be too thrilled to think about and to feel. But you have to, and you have to see it clearly and, and commit to yourself that you're going to go there. It's not a question of, it's not, do I want to, does this feel good? Do I, you know, no, it's going there. It's doing this shadow work. It's doing this, this, and it's, it's shadow work. And also it's being in touch with the shadow self because to be emotional is also to be dark in a lot of ways, right? You could be very high emotionally for sure. But the other side of that coin is dark feelings, dark energy, shadow, and your shadow self. So it's shadow work and shadow self. Those two things go hand in hand, but they are different. And for more on that, I really invite you to watch the first live show that we had for the first map, the spiritual, uh, yeah, the spiritual body. Um, that is on YouTube. You can check that out on YouTube from last week on the, uh, what was that? The third, no, the 10th. We was, yes, the 10th um, of April. So you can check that out on my YouTube channel as well. Um, Cause we do get into that um, to a certain degree talking about the shadow uh, the shadow, your sh shadow self and shadow work. Um, cause those two things can be a little bit ambiguous or confusing or, and, and they do go together, but they are separate things as well. But it's, it's good to pay attention to how that feels for you as you're going through the emotional body map. So tell yourself, we're going to have a, um, obviously a spirit walk for it. So that's going to help you as well, but do your own, uh, 
processing through this as far as you know telling yourself telling your bodies bodies all your bodies this is what we're gonna do and i want to do this This is going to be really good for us it's going to feel good if i get emotional if i cry if i laugh if i whatever it is that comes up that's all part of the process and part of healing and i welcome it tell yourself you know if you go in like ah resistant and scared and apprehensive and and uncomfortable it's gonna suck and you may even not do it and make excuses not to do it and get really extra busy and get headaches or not feel good and put it off and you know what i mean and and you don't want to do that you want to go in head first dive in full throttle totally excited to excavate to get in there to to clean up to to bring to the light what's been in the darkness because that's how we heal everything we bring it into the light for transmutation <sighs> it feels really good i promise you and you get stronger and faster and better and more creative and and you start aging in reverse and your body feels great and you're super healthy and you sleep fantastically and you digest great and you um all these things because you have cleaned out the sponge and oh, again and again in really deep deep ways and and you learn how to continue to keep that clear for yourself because you're so in tune with all of your bodies and and what's good for you and and the priority is you your mental state your emotional state your energetic state your physical state your spiritual state your abundant state how you see yourself your identity how you connect with yourself in a really spiritual soulful way are like the most important things ever because that is going to govern how you uh experience and process and live your life uh and 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 we actually very much can control that and doing work like this is part of that getting stronger this is active work and lastly i'm going to say this is active work that we need to carve out time for that we need to you know put other things aside for um it's come up a lot put production to the side put planning to the side put scheduling to the side you're doing the soul quest program this is your active work right now so you can get in your shit together and you know where you're gonna go from this point forward when we're done with the soul quest program you'll have more information to help you know what to do moving forward that's also the point here i think it's like a four point system i've got to really look into that because there's a lot of points here connecting to your soul what we're doing in the future how we're gonna there's like very there's these like core core um pillars of this program and and that's certainly one of them but we have to set aside as much as we can and and kind of stop ourselves from trying to get ahead of, of ourselves you know putting the 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 cart before the horse sort of thing because we're not supposed to be doing that right now it's only nine weeks it's not that long to give ourselves the space that we need to process and again we have a whole week to review the map to soak it in to do our meditations to do the spirit walk to you know connect with gaia and your guides to take your time do a few each day or set aside some big chunks of time again when you're when you can really focus on it and yourself that's what's really important okay so i believe that's it I'm not hearing anything else come through right now. Oh, I guess we're supposed to get a card. We haven't done this yet. All right, let's get a card. I wasn't prepared for this, um, but that's what's coming through right now. So um, let me see here. What are we doing? Um,
Oh, okay. Got it. We are going to use my, my newest Oracle deck that I love so much. It's such a great deck. Mystical Journey Oracle. Uh, fantastic, fantastic deck. Beautiful artwork. It's the, the artist is also the channeler of the messages, um, which is rare, which is how I'm going to do it as well for, for my Oracle. But, um, anyhow, being guided to this, I'm going to hold it up here so you can see me shuffling. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of clearing with some sage and pine and Palo Santo and copal here. I had this going earlier. It got quite smoky. Okay. Oopsie. Oopsie poopsie. Oh my God. All right, so can I get a card here? Uh, <laughs> Slippery little suckers. Oh, looky here. Self-care. <laughs> Self-care. Isn't that beautiful? And look at tears. She's in water. Water's all we always guide you to water in these parts. Bath water, ocean water, lake water, whatever kind of river water, but um definitely I'm into the baths. So this is card number two. self-care. Get my glasses on. We'll read this card. Again, here we go with, whoopsie, with self-care. Okay. So, self-care. <sighs> When you draw the self-care card, it can bring up many emotions. It can be challenging to accept that you deserve a life full of abundant love and self-acceptance. And you may experience internal resistance to feeling worthy. Allow yourself to be vulnerable and admit your true feelings, if only to yourself, which will release your emotions and give you permission to feel what needs to be felt. <laughs> I can't right now. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely love the oracle so much because this is the kind of thing that happens all the time. Is I mean, talking about this is the emotional body. It's all about emotions here. Okay. Moving on. Self-care involves taking some much needed time for yourself and acknowledging that your needs must be honored. <laughs> You know, I've been saying lately, let's see how the Oracle is going to back me up today. Um, literally a reverb of what I have just got done saying. Self-care involves taking some much needed time for yourself and acknowledging that your needs must be honored. However, it is not about recharging your energy so you can sacrifice yourself for others. It's about nurturing yourself and feeling good enough just as you are. Free yourself from the weight of the expectations of others and free yourself from the weight of your own expectations. 
be wary of the self-care to-do list. It can be easy to fall into a trap of telling yourself you should undertake certain practices every day to keep on top of your self-care rituals, but this will just add more pressure on you to achieve. Trying to fit in all the things you feel you should be doing can lead to feeling overwhelmed. Regardless of your outside achievements, you are worthy of love, acceptance, wealth, and good health, and it's all waiting for you in abundance. You just need to allow it to happen. And action. Before you get out of bed in the morning, instead of running through a to-do list, ask yourself, what does my body need today? Oh my God, yes. I love this. It may help to repeat this mantra. I deserve love. I deserve acceptance. Oh my goodness. I love this so much. Yes, it's the first time I've ever pulled this card. It's, I couldn't, I've been at a more perfect time. I love this so very much. Holy moly. I need some of my juice. By the way, grape juice and lemonade is an amazing combination. Um, it's just the best. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, what does my body need today? Oh, first off, I'm going to say that we talked specifically about um, not being, um, Vanessa, one of the people, one of the lovely soul family members in the Soul Quest program brought that up in the last live about like, you know, all the different things that you have to do all the time to kind of maintain yourself. And it's like, well, it shouldn't have to, it shouldn't be, so much that you can't fit it in. And, and if that's the case and you're still not okay, then other things, then other things need to be done other than, you know, cause it, you don't, nobody should or need to spend hours a day on maintenance more than the most, I would say kind of a like a daily thing that may be a, like feel like a lot to people. It does to me. Um, not that I wouldn't, don't want to do it, but that, you know, with actually having only so many hours in the day would be like a daily bath. Um, but Anyhow, the point here is, is that it shouldn't be like a checklist. Like I'm being my spiritual, you know, good girl, whatever, doing all of these things, checking off the list because it's, it's kind of missing the point there. Um, so anyway, um, and this one here, what does my body need today? I love this. And I constantly say, listen to your body, be close with your body. We're going to get into the physical body. Um, in the next map after this one and uh, i believe that's the order spiritual uh <laughs> mental emotional yeah um and anyway uh but the body always knows what it needs and what it wants to feel good and not necessarily in a habitual way, because while that will be sometimes the physical body reacting to addictions and stuff, that's very much the emotional body, very much the energetic body, um, used to certain charges and used to feeling certain things. Um, but anyhow, the body will always tell you what it needs. And if you listen to your body and you honor your emotions, um, you will be ahead of the game. Now, it's also important to recognize where you're, you know, need to push yourself and where you need to honor yourself in different ways. When you're being lazy, when you don't want to be uncomfortable, when, you know, what, because we do need to, you know, kind of do that for ourselves in different ways. So, um, we have to adult it out and be real with ourselves, you know, like um, as far as assessing what we need versus what, what we want. Uh, when it is, the question is, it, what does my body want today? It's what does my body need today? 
So the need, it's what does my body need, not what I want. I want to sit and watch four hours of binge on a TV show or, you know, screw off doing whatever. My body needs me, though, <laughs> to get up and go outside and go for a walk or, you know, go do some physical activity or whatever. That's what my body needs versus what I want. Those are two different things. So it's about being good enough to yourself that you give your body what it needs. Because if you give your body what it needs, it's going to be a happy body. And when you have a happy body, you're not going to be in, in physical, mental, energetic distress. That's just the way it works. It's pretty simple. You know, it's pretty basic. Yeah. It's pretty basic. We tend to mistreat our bodies, deny our bodies, torture our bodies, um, neglect our bodies, abuse our bodies, because what we want. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. So self-care is about what the body needs, what we need, what we spiritually need, what we emotionally need, what we physically need, what we energetically need, what we need to maintain ourselves, not what we want for any ego thing or status thing or, or materialistic thing, you know? Um, so honoring the body and everything about it, loving the body, uh, nurturing the body, being um, being gentle and kind and loving to our bodies will radiate out through all of our bodies because it will help us, you know, be more emotionally stable. It will help us be and have more energy and more stable energy. It will help us uh, also be more spiritually clear um, and creative and all those things too. But this, but, uh, but going back to the emotions of this, this is about honoring your emotions. And in this card, she's crying and she's and and it's just, there isn't, there's, there's no hiding there in that. Um, and like it says here, when you draw the self-care card, it can bring up many emotions. It can be challenging to accept that you deserve a life full of uh, abundant love and self-acceptance. And you may experience internal resistance to feeling worthy. Allow yourself to be vulnerable and admit your true feelings, if only to yourself, which will release your emotions and give you permission to feel what needs to be felt. Again, that's without saying it, that's like shadow work, shadow self stuff. That's, that's saying, you know, we're going to do this and I give myself permission to feel this and to go there with myself and not to feel shame, not to be judgmental that I'm going to take care of myself here in, in this, in this space. And that's exactly what this is all about is, is, very gently holding ourselves through this in a very, very nurturing, loving and kind healing way. Um, so that was awesome. I'm so glad I was guided to pull a card and that this card came up because again, it was so much about, um, acknowledging, uh, acknowledging, nurturing, feeling our emotions and connecting with our physical body and, and all of that. Just absolutely perfect. Just perfect. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I can't, I can't with this right now. Um, if you want more of that, definitely join me, um, in my lives. I pull Oracle cards in all my lives. I do. Um, I will pick from the gallery and give people Oracle readings, what I call full spectrum Oracle readings, which I, I get psychic information. I channel, I, um, will do mediumship and, and pick up on energy and physical stuff going on. It's just, like I said, full spectrum. And I offer those in different shows throughout the month. Um, and it's a lot of fun and very helpful. And uh, again, we are going to be doing all live shows uh, on uh, YouTube. Um, 
I am moving away from Fireside. I'm going to be sending out an email to all my subscribers about this and doing a show specifically for this, but I will put this here at this time. I'm not going to be on Fireside anymore. Too many technical difficulties and no help there really um, when it comes to that. So we are moving away from Fireside and going to be exclusively broadcasting on YouTube. Um, participants who want to join in and engage with me and get readings and be part of the show and ask questions and all that good stuff is, um, are going to join through Zoom. Uh, but instructions on all of that and information, again, is going to go out to an email to all my subscribers um, and also be uh, on my website as well and an article on Medium within the next uh, day or so. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you coming to Infinity Shaman Circle to be with me here uh, in this wonderful space. There's going to be so much more to come in the future. And again, check out archangelslove.com for all the info on me and what I do and how I do it all and my miraculous, amazing story of transformation and healing from super, super duper sick to super duper healer and spiritual guide. And of course, the Soul Quest program is waiting for you to join. I guarantee you are going to love it. All right. That's it. Bye for now. See you later, alligator. Have a great week. Bye.